to see uh, see what's happened within the past year since we're here filming What in the World Are They Spraying just a uh, about a year ago. And uh, so let's go and, uh, and see our good friends, see what they've been experiencing on the farm. Uh, I believe that they've actually tested the rain and found some contamination from uh, chemtrail geoengineering programs. Look up here in the sky, these uh, so-called cirrus clouds are actually uh, sprayed aerosols. They spread out, they're much higher than the, the, uh, the lower clouds, which are uh, trade wind clouds. Those puffy ones are actually natural, normally. Since we were here last year, how much we've had, uh, has, has this increased? We've had a dramatic increase. We've had maybe a week that I haven't seen uh, in total of intensive spraying over Maui. Mm -hmm. Most of it is done offshore. All our foliage is dry. It's, it's, it's crumbly. It's the driest weather we've had in recorded history in the last two years. The plants are suffering. The people are suffering. And it's happening so slow and so incremental that people don't notice. You guys did a couple of tests before, yeah. not not a couple, but many tests, but uh, since we were here last year, what what did you find in, in we the rain? We found abundant aluminum, barium, uh, strontium, and manganese. Those are the things that we actually tested for. Mm -hmm. Those items really shouldn't be in the rainwater. We've been invited to uh, some other farmers from, uh, from around the area here on Maui. As you can see up in the sky, it looks like we, we have more aerosols uh, again in, into the sky. But uh, we met uh, Susie and Randy in town, and they said that they were having some challenges with their yields. We want to find out what the story is. So uh, come along. We'll, we'll see what's up. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having us Hi, you're on welcome. the farm. Nice this is you. beautiful. Your home is, uh, uh, is beautiful. God, your land is beautiful as well. Um, yeah, thank you. Can, you. can you take us and kind of walk us through the farm? and? And talk a, a little bit about. I used to be able to just walk out and just put seeds in the ground and they would grow. And I've tried three different um, different moons for planting and nothing started, like nothing. And I did do some in some trays and I got about 25% yield in the trays. Um, so I do have some plants growing right now, but it's definitely a lot less than like last winter when I started planting for the summer. Yeah, I mean the rain has definitely been uh, different. It's it's always different here, but we had kind of a drier winter than um, and a very late winter. It, all the rains came in the springtime this year, and not so much in January and February where they normally are. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was quite different. So they, and it came all once. Hey Mike, I just wanted to tell you one of my friends, I was talking to a friend of mine after you left today about the chemtrails. And he, I was in Nihiko and he was like, oh yeah, see look, here's one right there. And I was like, oh, okay. And it, it was really consolidated, like it had just happened. And then I came home and I've been watching it all day and it turned into that wispy thing that you showed me this morning. It's funny, I've known about the chemtrails for a while, but no one ever like showed me what it was or whatever, so I just wanted to let you know I understand now. Uh, my name is Bob Michael. I'm a retired air traffic controller here on Maui and from Honolulu. And uh, I have a friend started explaining about the chemtrails to me and I wasn't aware of it. And then I started noticing the patterns of the uh, chemtrails, and they were north to south, which would be a very unusual contrail for here, because all the air traffic at higher altitude overflights are at east and west, going from Asia to the U.S. mainland. Uh -huh. So it became really obvious pretty fast that it was not a normal situation going on. And more I observed it, and I've just noticed how it gets spreading out and it'll come over and it just spreads and the sky turns gray and it's a continuing process and it seems to be building and building more and more every day. We were supposed to have a, a La Nina which brings uh, 
heavy rains, heavy winter rains, <laughs> and uh, and we rely on that rain and for our livestock, for our cattle and our pigs, and, and uh, we haven't. April is supposed to be our, one of our wettest months, and we usually get eight inches or so, and we've barely even gotten an inch. And, we rely on that rain to you know, bring us through the summer. My name's Lynn and I'm a farmer out in Haiku in Maui. And last year I had a sudden um, death to all of what we would call our sentinel plants, which is oregano, mint, some indigenous plants, which would be like go to cola. Um, and these are all the plants that we would use and they survive almost anywhere. And I took my samples in to um, the, the county extension service twice they lost them and then when they finally did get them to call me back it was they said oh bugs I'm like yes but bugs come after disease and weakness and so I'm seeing things also in failures in plastics and rubber in unprecedented levels out there and then when I, I did run into a USDA inspector at the airport, and I said, okay, what is going on with these particular plants? I've never had these plants die on me before. And she said, you know, my plants like that are dying in my home garden too. And I said, well, are you guys checking it out? She says, well, no, we're not really checking it out. I just started um, an organic garden. And the other day we noticed quite a lot of spraying in the sky collected rainwater that night. The next morning we tested it and um, we used two different methods. The first test came up as 7.5 pH and the second test came up as 6.7. So according to um, Francis Maggles, a Bi biologist in California who I've spoken with, this is really alkaline. The first test was a hundred times more alkaline than is normal, and the second test would have been about 20 times more alkaline than normal. Aloha mai, velina mai nei, o kohova ipai aina. Welcome to Truth and Justice. Once again, we are here live. Geoengineering is defined as the artificial modification of the Earth's climate. That includes the ocean, but it also includes our weather. And uh, it's very similar to the GMO seed, also linked into the GMO seed, uh, uh, situation that we have here, but it's very si uh, similar because we have corporations that want to corporatize things that are natural and organic so that they can gain money and power off of it. No, there's another part uh, of geoengineering. It's called uh, iron fertilization. What they are doing is changing the composition of our ocean. The theory in the belief is that the harp uses the metal particulate that we have in our sky to use as a conduit to emit its frequency. What it can do is heat up this metal particulate and literally create high pressure and low pressure systems and they can steer storms. Barium is a desiccant as well. So typically um, in Northern California when the rainstorms come in, it's very common to hear airplanes flying over these clouds. And, it's amazing because in the past several years, when the storms typically bring in about uh, three inches of rain, now they're getting a quarter inch, a half inch, not much rain. But what we see in the Midwest and on the East Coast is incredible flooding. So what they're doing is sequestering the moisture with these chemicals and then they're, again, moving jet streams and, and steering these storms. What it's doing is creating havoc, creating floods. It's hurting people, it's killing people. Many people have died from this and many people have lost their homes. What do you think those people would do if they found out that uh, there might be corporations behind their incredible losses? Let's address some of the lightning that you've been having here on Hawaii. Yes, the lightning, yeah, that was weird. It was pretty weird. All of a sudden, we have a thunderstorm, lightning. Yeah, and aluminum is a conductor. Geoengineer Ken Caldera said there will be winners and losers in geoengineering. If That's a we, gamble. If we decide to do this, That's yes. That's a real bad gamble yeah, on they're, human life. They're very open, open about this. And let's go back to a statement that geoengineer David Keith made a few short months back. He said, geoengineering gives man godlike power. But we're not. No.
we've seen a great increase in cancers in the past several years. But we're here for Earth Day. Let's talk about these substances and what they do to our Earth, not their Earth. Aluminum oxide is very toxic and it will change the pH of soils. Uh, what we've noted in our journey, not only here on Maui, but in other areas such as Northern California, scientists started noticing that, their so that, that the ecosystems were dying off. As we see here on Hawaii, many farmers who, who I've interviewed uh, have told us that they are having difficulty getting the yields that they have just a couple of years ago. Aluminum is very toxic to soils. It will destroy natural systems. Earth Day produced so much public interest that over 200 people showed up to our Chemtrail Geoengineering Symposium later in the week. There are letters from anonymous military people that say spraying at this altitude, 40,000 feet, cannot possibly affect human health at all. Now that's just wrong. We don't spray above Maui or Hawaii if they want to get involved. We don't spray until we see an EIS, Environmental Impact Statement, which covers health and environment. We're supposed to have this law, says an EIS. You gotta do an EIS before you affect us. Okay, well, have we obeyed the law? So can you pass a moratorium not to do it until there's an EIS, number one. Number two, that other guy from Tennessee, who said, well, I think a little bit of experimentation is okay. If we get our backs against the wall, we might have to do this. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, now it's my area. When you're having a problem, an outbreak, the papaya is all dying from green spot, green spot virus. An outbreak of dengue. You get to do experimental things if and only if you get written informed consent from everybody involved. It's as simple as that. Other speakers were Dr. Bonnie Marsh, human rights activist May Halani Ventura, and Bruce Douglas, director of Maui Earth Day. The event birthed the beginning steps towards the Blue Sky Ordinance, which will ban aerosol spraying from geoengineering programs above Maui. And from that, that has gone into the concept of, well, what can we do here locally? We can pass a county ordinance that says, you may not spray things in our sky without our permission. And we've had meetings with county officials uh, who've been listening, uh, health department people who have actually taken a part over the past year and have done range sample testing you know, over a period of a month's time, two month period of time we did range count sample testing that conclusively showed aluminum, barium, strontium in our rainwater, in our water catchment tanks and uh, it's exploded. So many people are, it's common knowledge now, whereas a year ago it wasn't common knowledge. People hadn't heard, hadn't heard about it or thinking it was even happening in Hawaii. Yep. But it's really exciting that it's gone from just a few people a year ago to probably thousands of people now who are, are aware and are ready to take action. This is the end of our Hawaii tour. We're ending it here in Maui, beautiful Maui, Hawaii. We've seen profound changes, not only in the amount of aerosols that we see, but also in the awakening. Uh, we have many public officials now who are starting to take steps and putting together a county resolution to ban aerosol spraying uh, above the island here. Um, also, we've seen uh, a tremendous awakening in consciousness of people who want to get active and are addressing this. So again, I encourage everyone, what's happening on Maui can happen in your community. You can, you can uh, get involved uh, at the local level, you can get involved at the city level, you can even get involved at the national level and at the world level. What's important is that each and every one of us get involved and address the issue of geoengineering. Together, we can all make a difference. Thanks. Much love and aloha from Maui, Hawaii.